everyone. Nice to see you back KFC online. Wow, this is already the last month of the year. Do you know what month is this? Give a guess. Yeah, you are right. It's the month of December. And what do we celebrate in the month of December? Yes, Christmas. That's the special occasion for all of us. Auntie Candy loves Christmas too. But why is Christmas so special? Christmas is special because God sent His Son, Jesus, to the earth to be the Savior for all of us. And we want to thank God for His great love for all of us. So now children, let's stand on our feet. Let's pray and get our hearts ready for today's worship. Okay, bring posture, put your hands together. Let's close our eyes and let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for bringing us together again so that we can come before you and worship you. So may the Lord, may you um, quieten our hearts right now and as we prepare to sing praises unto you and to worship you and to thank you, God, because you are the God that loved us so much that you gave your one and only Son to us. So we want to lift our voices unto you and may you be pleased with our worship. In Jesus' name we pray and all children say, Amen. So let's get ready for our first song. It's about to love. In the whole month of December, you will learn about the birth of Jesus. And today, we are going to have the first lesson. And it started with an angel appearing to the Virgin Mary, telling her that she was going to have a baby. Now, Auntie Candy has a little poem here to help us remember and to understand the encounter. Okay, you may follow me as we read and do the actions together. So, an angel came to Mary, bringing her news of great joy. 
Do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. Smile and be happy. You have a baby boy. His name will be Jesus, sent from God above. Smile and be happy. He'll show us God's great love. Right, let's do it again. An angel appeared to Mary, bringing news of great joy. Do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. Smile and be happy. You will have a baby boy. His name will be Jesus, sent from God above. Smile and be happy. He will show us. God's great love. Yes, God loved us so much that He sent His one and only Son, Jesus, from heaven, to born as a baby, as a human baby. Jesus will live among us. He teach us, and He loved us. And finally, He died on the cross for the sins of all mankind. Jesus is the reason why we celebrate Christmas, because Jesus is the good, good news. The Savior came to save us. The Savior came to save us. He came to give us life. He came to give us life. The Savior came to free us. The Savior came to free us. He left his throne on high. He left his throne on high. He said, Believe in me. Believe in me. He said, Receive.
God, thank you for your love for each and every one of us. Thank you that you have given us such a great gift during Christmas time, your one and only Son, to come to love us, to rescue us, and be our Savior. We pray for the children right now as they go for the lesson. May the Lord you open up their ears and their heart to know more about you and the purpose of God you sending your Son to the earth. And may the little children be able to acknowledge you and receive you as their saviour as well. So may you bless the season of this Christmas that many more little ones will come to know you and accept you as their personal saviour and Lord. So we commit the lesson time into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. And all children say, Amen. Now children, go for your lesson and enjoy it. Hello everyone, I'm Auntie Kat, and it's time again for our Bible lesson. Now we are entering into an exciting season because in the coming weeks, we are going to hear about the, one of the most exciting times that ever happened. Are you ready to hear it? First things first, let's say hello to God first. So pray in posture because we're going to pray. Now I want you to pray with me, all right? So let's pray. Dear God, Thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for all the blessings that you have given us. Thank you for protecting us each and every moment. Lord God, we ask that you help us and guide us as we hear from your word today. Help us to learn what you are teaching us and help us to follow and obey what you are teaching us. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen. All right, now, do you remember a time when Daddy or Mommy made you a promise? Maybe you asked Daddy for a bicycle, and Daddy said, I promise to give you one for your birthday. Or maybe you told Mommy that you wanted to go to the beach so that you can swim and play and make sandcastles. And Mommy said, I promise to bring you to the beach this weekend. Now, did you believe Daddy and Mommy when they made you the promise? How did you feel as the day when they would keep their promise got nearer and nearer? Did you count the days until it was your birthday or the weekend? Did you count the days until they would make true the promise that they made? Did you get more and more excited as the day got nearer and nearer? In the coming weeks, we are going to learn about the time when God made true one of the promises that He had made a long, long time ago. In fact, this promise was one that God made since the time of Adam and Eve. If you remember, Adam and Eve, the very first people God created, 
they sinned against God when they disobeyed God. And because they disobeyed God, they had to leave Eden, the beautiful garden that God made for them. And they couldn't return to Eden because God put an angel at the entrance to guard it. Now, that was a sad, sad day. Because since then, people have been separated from God because of sin. Sin is when we disobey God. But because God loves us so much, He promised that He would one day send a Savior who would save us from our sins. And this Savior would be the one who would be the way for us to be with God. Now today, we are going to hear about the time when God made true this promise that He had made. And it all starts with the birth of a very special baby. This special baby is God's own son. And this special baby was going to be the savior of the world. But before this baby would be born, God had to prepare the people for this very special birth. God chose a man and a woman who would take care of God's son as he grows up. And for this special task, God chose Mary to be the woman who would give birth to God's son. Now, Mary was going to be married to Joseph. Now, both Mary and Joseph were very simple people who lived very simple lives. They were not rich, they were not famous, but they both loved God and they obeyed God. So God chose them to be the ones to care for God's son as he grows up. Now, God had to prepare Mary for the very special task of giving birth to his son and caring for his son. And the way that God told Mary was also very special. God sent an angel to tell Mary the good news that God had chosen her to be the one to give birth to his son, that God was now about to keep his promise of a savior through her. Now, angels are supernatural beings made by God. They live in heaven, and God sends them out on special missions or special jobs, just like when God sent an angel to guard the entrance to the Garden of Eden. Angels are also messengers from God, so God sends them out to tell people His message for them. And for this special job of telling Mary that God had chosen her to give birth to His Son, God sent the angel whose name is Gabriel. So our Bible lesson for today comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. Now we are going to watch a video of what is written in Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. So let's watch the video to find out what the angel Gabriel told Mary, and let's see how Mary responded to God's message for her. Now pay attention because the angel Gabriel is going to tell Mary the name that she and Joseph are to give to God's son. So let's watch the video. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be frightened, Mary, for God has decided to bless you. You'll become pregnant and have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. He will be very great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. But. How can I have a baby? I am a virgin. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. 
so the baby born to you will be holy, and he will be called the Son of God. What's more, your relative Elizabeth has become pregnant in her old age. People used to say she was barren, but she's already in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, and I am willing to accept whatever he wants. May everything you have said come true. And then the angel left. Wow, wasn't that amazing? Wasn't it amazing how God sent an angel to tell Mary that he had chosen her among all the women to be the one to give birth to God's son. Now, did you notice how Mary first reacted when she saw the angel? She was a little frightened and confused, right? Why was that? Well, because Mary had never seen an angel before, and she didn't know why an angel from God would visit her. So the angel Gabriel told her not to be afraid because he was there to bring Mary good news. What was the good news? That God was now going to make true His promise of a Savior. And this Savior would be born as a baby through Mary. Now, how did Mary respond when the angel told her this? She couldn't believe it at first, right? Why? Because Mary was a virgin. Although Mary and Joseph were going to get married, they hadn't gotten married yet. So it wasn't possible for Mary to become pregnant. But the angel Gabriel reminded Mary that with God, all things are possible. It was possible because the Spirit of God would come upon her. So Mary understood that the birth of the Savior would be a miracle. It would be something that only God can do. Mary loved God and Mary believed God. So how did she respond? She accepted the task God gave her. Mary obeyed God, and she looked forward to God keeping his promise of sending the one who would be the savior of the world. Now, did you pay attention to the name that the angel Gabriel said Mary should give to the savior of the world? What is the name? Can you remember it? It's Jesus. So Jesus is God's son whom he promised since the beginning that he would send to be the savior of the world. Now, that's not the end of it. Make sure to tune in next week to find out what happened when Jesus, the savior of the world, was born. All right, so soon we are going to be celebrating Christmas. Now, did you know that Jesus is the reason we celebrate Christmas? On Christmas, we remember and celebrate the birth of Jesus. We remember how God kept his promise of sending the Savior who would save us from our sins. All right, and now it's question time. So it's, it's time to put on our thinking caps and let's see if you can answer these questions from our lesson today. Are you ready for the first question? Here goes. Today's lesson comes from which book in the Bible? Now, if you paid attention, I mentioned the book before we watched the, the video. So, is it from Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John? Are you ready with your answer? So, if you answer that it's from Luke, that is correct. Our lesson for today comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. Now, that was a tough one. Here's an easier question. What was the name of the woman in today's lesson? Was it Mary or was it Elizabeth? Are you ready with your answer? So if you answered it was Mary, that is correct. Mary was the one whom God chose for a very special task. Here's the next question. Who did God send to visit Mary? So in order to prepare Mary, God had to send someone to tell her what was about to happen. Who did God send? Did God send a royal messenger? Or did God send an angel? Are you ready with your answer? If you answer that God sent an angel 
That is correct. God sent Angel Gabriel to tell Mary a very special message. Here's the next question. What did the angel tell Mary? So what was this very special message that the angel Gabriel told Mary? Was it that she was going to give birth to God's son? Or that she was going to Bethlehem with Joseph? Are you ready with your answer? So if you answered that she was going to give birth to God's son, that is correct. God had chosen Mary to be the one to give birth to God's son. Now here's the last question, and I'm not going to give you any choices. But if you listen to today's lesson, you should have no problem answering this question. What name was Mary to give God's son? Do you remember the name? Are you ready with your answer? It's Jesus. Yes, so Jesus is God's son whom he promised he would send to be the savior of the world. And that leads us to our memory verse for this week. And it's taken from Luke chapter 2, verse 11. So for the toddlers and the nurseries, the memory verse is, a savior has been born. Now, to help us remember our memory verse, we are going to put it into a song. So I'm going to sing it first, and then we're going to sing it together. All right? So the memory verse is, a Savior has been born, a Savior has been born. Luke 2, 11 says, a Savior has been born. So are you ready to sing the memory verse with me? On the count of three. One, two, three. A Savior has been born, a Savior has been born. Luke 2, 11 says, a Savior has been born. All right, so keep singing the song and then you'll have no problem remembering our memory verse. Now, for the kindies, it's a longer version of the verse. And I don't have a song for you, but if you follow the actions, then it'll be easier for you to remember, all right? So the memory verse is, today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Luke chapter 2, verse 11. So, shall we say our memory verse together? And let's do the actions together. On the count of three. One, two, three. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Luke chapter 2, verse 11. All right, and now it's craft time. So we have a few crafts for you to do. One is a coloring page, which you can cut out and you can hang it by your door or wherever, wherever you want to hang it so that you'll remember our lesson for today. There's also a craft where you're going to color the angel Gabriel and Mary. And you're going to need a paper plate and you're going to cut the inside of the paper plate. And on the inner circle of the paper plate, you're going to paste the angel Gabriel and Mary, and you're going to cut them out. And then, you're going to punch holes into Gabriel and the outer circle of the paper plate so that you can hang the angel Gabriel so that he looks like he's floating or flying, right? And you're going to paste Mary at the bottom. You can decorate the outer circle of the paper plate any way you want. Like you can color it or put stickers on it, just like I did here. I put glitter and star stickers so that it looks heavenly. All right, there are also uh, templates for you to make Christmas cards. So you're going to color the cards and later, I'm going to show you what you can do with these Christmas cards. For the kindies, there are additional worksheets for you to do. Puzzles that you can solve, all right? So enjoy the crafts and hopefully you'll remember what you've learned uh, today in today's lesson from these crafts. So what did we learn today? Well, one of the things that we learned is that God always, always keeps his promises. God kept his promise since the beginning that he would send a savior to save us from our sins. And because God always keeps his promises, we can trust everything that God says. 
we can trust that He will keep all the promises that He made in the Bible. Promises of love, joy, peace, eternal life with Him, blessings, and all other promises that God made. Because as we learned, God never breaks His promise. We also learned that God had to prepare the people for the coming of the Savior. Now, God prepared Mary by sending the angel Gabriel to tell her what was about to happen. Now, this Christmas, we too can prepare our hearts as we remember and celebrate the birth of Jesus. How? By thinking of ways that we can be more like Jesus, by showing love to others. What are some of the ways that we can do to show love to others this Christmas? Well, for one, you can make the Christmas cards from our craft sections, and then you can give these cards to your family, your friends, your classmates and teachers in school, and you can tell them that you love them and you appreciate them. Also, this Christmas, you might be getting lots and lots of presents, right? Now, as you receive these presents, these gifts, think of what gifts you can share with others. Maybe you can think of uh, things that you can share or, or give to other children who you think might need it more than you, like your old toys or books, clothes, and shoes that you don't, you don't use anymore. Now, as we thank Jesus, as we thank God for all the blessings that he has given us, let us think of ways that we can share these blessings to others. So, instead of thinking what you can get this Christmas, think of ways that you can give this Christmas, because Christmas reminds us of the best gift that we can ever receive. God gave us his precious son, Jesus. So this Christmas, think of ways that you can share the love and joy of Jesus to others. All right. Let us pray. Pray in posture and pray with me. Dear God, thank you for keeping all your promises. Thank you for keeping your promise of sending a Savior who would save us from our sins. Dear God, as you have shown us your love, help us to share your love to others. Help us to bless others as you have blessed us and help us to spread the joy of Jesus to others this Christmas. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, we've come to the end of our Bible lesson today. Join us again next time. Until then, enjoy the holidays, be safe, and God bless you.